Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! When will your government get a grip on the Windrush crisis? Good morning. The demise of Amber Rudd, once seen as a leading candidate for the Tory leadership, has been even swifter than her rapid rise to near the top of British politics. Amber Rudd! Oh, oh, oh. And the Windrush scandal, which has left her reputation in tatters, is just the latest example of how the Home Office is often seen as a graveyard for political careers. In modern times, only Theresa May has made the leap from Home Secretary to Prime Minister. And many MPs believe she, and not her successor, is really to blame for Windrush. The daughter of a stockbroker, Amber Rudd was educated at the elite Cheltenham Ladies College and Edinburgh University, before working for investment bankers J.P. Morgan. And reigns with you and the Holy Goat. And perhaps surprisingly for a politician with an unflashy image, she also worked on Richard Curtis's hit 1994 film, Four Weddings and a Funeral, as aristocracy coordinator, which meant finding extras to appear in it. She appeared briefly in one of the church scenes herself. In the 1990s, she was married to the writer and restaurant critic A.A. A. Gill, who died in 2016, and they had two children. He called her the silver spoon in his columns because of her privileged background. After being placed on David Cameron's A-list of parliamentary candidates, in 2010 she won the marginal seat of Hastings and Rye and was soon parliamentary private secretary to the Chancellor George Osborne. She was on her way. After spells as a government whip and junior minister in the coalition government, she joined the cabinet as energy and climate change secretary, when Mr Cameron won a Tory majority in 2015. But it was the 2016 EU referendum campaign, which brought about the downfall of Mr Cameron and Mr Osborne, that dramatically raised her profile. As a leading remainer in the campaign, she was one of the stars of the TV debates, and was involved in a memorable clash with the leading Brexiteer, Boris Johnson. Now, we're bus. talking about cold, hard cash yes. that belongs to the people of this country. Uh, you don't save money by leaving the yes, European sir. Union. Yes. Instead, you have less for the public services. Her reward when Theresa May became Prime Minister was to succeed her at the Home Office, a top job but seen by many as a poisoned chalice. And it's been a turbulent period. Her first Tory conference speech as Home Secretary in 2016 was reported as a hate incident to police after she suggested that companies should be forced to disclose how many foreign workers they employ. The test should ensure people coming here are filling gaps in the labour market, not taking jobs that British people could do. But it was Windrush and her apparent lack of grip on her department that ended her tenure at the Home Office, despite a series of U-turns and apologies. There is absolutely no question about their right to remain, and I am very sorry for any confusion or anxiety felt. She was ultimately undone by the forensic probing of the Home Affairs Select Committee of MPs, when her evidence was contradicted by her own civil servants who now had their revenge. We don't have targets for removals. But you did. I, I don't know what, 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 what are you referring We've to. We've just heard thing? from the previous evidence that the Home Office and individual, <coughs> there are regional targets for net removals. I, have, I didn't hear the testimony. I'm not sure what shape that might be in. But if you ask me are the numbers of people we expect to be removed, um, that's not how we operate. Besides a Home Secretary, Theresa May has also lost a key ally on the Brexit War Cabinet as it tackles the vital issue of the customs union. Pro-Brexit MPs will shed few tears for her demise, but Remainers will be dismayed. As will Theresa May, who now the Home Secretary has gone, will become the chief target for opposition attacks on Windrush. John Craig, Sky News.